The unexpected death of beauty influencer Jessica Petway has many concerned after she shared she was misdiagnosed with fibroids, only to learn later she actually had cervical cancer. Dr. Wendy McDonald is here with more on what women need to look for and what questions we should be asking when we have our annual exam. Thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. Because we were just talking in the break. There's a million things because she went to a doctor this when her symptoms were present. Yes. This so is such a happen? tragic story, yeah. right? It's so tragic because it's so preventable. She was found unresponsive on her bathroom floor because she was bleeding excessively. Mm -hmm. And she tells a story on her social media, God rest her soul. She was, it was June of 2022. Mm -hmm. She had to be blood transfused and she was told, oh, you have fibroids, this is normal. And she actually even required a couple of more transfusions in the coming months. I think she did a total of three yes. hospitals. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So then the bleeding gets better and then her pain starts to increase again mm -hmm. and then the bleeding comes back in December of 22 so she's admitted to the hospital because she's so weak that she can't you know kind of function and only in January of that of 2023 was a doctor kind of you know thoughtful enough to say let me do an exam yeah. when they saw a mass that obscured her whole cervix she then goes to oncology and is diagnosed with cervical cancer but this is a eight month span between mm -hmm. the beginning of this bleeding where she's told oh it's fibroids it's normal and then you're diagnosed with cervical cancer and Wait, then nine this, months later she's dead that's just so tragic. So in this case, was she just told she had fibroids? They didn't do an ultrasound? They didn't do an exam? No, I don't know. I'm not, okay. you know, very, I, I, I wasn't involved in her care, sure, obviously, sure. right? But I can only imagine that they did do imaging and saw a mass and said it was fibroids. I can only imagine that because okay. a mass can be a fibroid. Bleeding can be coming from fibroids. Okay. But the take home here is that cervical cancer is detectable in like 99% of cases if you're getting a pap test. Okay. Mm. 99. Literally, a pap will rule out cervical cancer in over 99% of cases. That's crazy. What can you do as a patient? I know sometimes when I walk into the doctor's office, I automatically have this feeling the doctor knows what's best, the doctor right. has been trained. Right. If the doctor says this, then this is what it must be. Right. How can I? I advocate for myself pushing that doctor to go further. If ever you feel, first of all, I think our gut is, is, our gut means a lot, right? If you feel like this doesn't make me feel comfortable, I'm uneasy, getting a second opinion mm -hmm. is reasonable. But I also think pro giving the, the doctor the um, desire to, or telling the doctor that your desire is to prove that you're safe. Yeah. Prove that I'm safe. Right. Show me the data. Where is my pap? Like, what is the result? Um, if I have fibroids and you say, oh, that's normal, well, let's follow them and make sure they're not growing excessively because fibroids can be cancerous too. Now, very, very rarely, less than 1%, less than 0.1% of fibroids are cancer. Okay. Most fibroids are benign and most people will get fibroids. This is actually a sign or an image of fibroids. They can be in various locations and they can look, you know, very large. They can even look kind of ominous, but you want to make sure that you're following them to make sure that they're not, you know, uh, growing excessively you're not bleeding excessively, but cancer of the cervix is going to look like a mass at the level of the cervix. And I'm certain it was probably growing in this situation. Yeah. It was bleeding and all it needed was a pap, a swab. Ultimately, she had a biopsy of the mass that determined that it was cervical cancer. And but, she found out at that visit. Yes. Yeah. It was determined at that, that visit. It wasn't like she had to go home and no. wait. The person looked and she said in her, in her account, she says, finally, the doctor said, can I just take a look? And I'm saying I'm reading this, and I'm like, why didn't you, you looking look? before? Right? Oh mm. my God. Well, okay. Okay. So one thing is, I know a lot of guidelines say, oh, only get a pap every two years. Right. Yes. Only get a pap every three years. Mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable with that. Can I go to my doctor and say, I need one every year? Yes. Every time I come to see you for my annual, I need a pap. Yes, now let's back up. The cervical cancer screening guidelines changed some years ago from having yearly paps. The first they went to every two years, and now they're saying we can do paps every three to five years with HPV co-testing. Okay. That is because cervical cancer and precancer moves really slowly. I mean, it's like the snail of cancers, okay. right? Like it does not go from zero to 60. It goes from zero to one to two, right? Right. So the idea is that if you, if you have a longer span in between screening, you're going to catch it even if it is three years later. You're going to catch it well before it's cervical cancer. But these are guidelines. Right. Guidelines means really advice. Yes. Like you can take this advice or you can say, you know what, I want to pap every year. And your insurance will it likely absolutely. cover yes. that pap every single year. So I have patients, especially when the guidelines changed, I was like, you know, you don't need a pap. And some people push back. And then I'm like, why am I pushing back to these right. people? If you want a pap and you I'm understand like, the reasons, I'm going to do the pap. Right. And then going back to fibroids, if 
there's so many women that have them. Yes. Why don't, if they, if they cause bleeding and they cause potential issues, why don't they always take them out? So if they're causing issues, often we can take them out okay. or we can treat them in various ways. But if they're not causing issues, it's kind of irresponsible, honestly, to like do surgery on everybody who has fibroids because then you'd be doing surgery on but, everybody. But in this case where she was told she's bleeding that badly and it was fibroids, why wouldn't they opt for surgery if that was even just the fibroids? It's a great question, my friend. Uh -huh. It's a great question. I mean, as a gynecologist reading this, I'm like, like incensed by this yes. whole situation because there's so many reasons and so many ways that this should have not Been happened caught. this yeah. way. And you say you yourself got calls from a lot of people yes. when the story was came out. They were out. like, please help me understand, because you read this and you hear you misdiagnosis fibroids, and all these people have fibroids, myself included. Yeah, you're scared. And you're like, do I have cervical cancer? If you've had a pap and you're up to date on that, you don't have cervical cancer. Like, you don't. But we can still evaluate and make sure a person is safe and their bleeding is, you know, reasonable and we're reducing symptoms. But the pap... The pap saves, and I have to plug. Where it's at. And I have to plug the HPV vaccine. The HPV. There was just a study that came out that showed that out of like I think it was like thousands. It was thousands. It was like forty thousand people who got HPV vaccine before the age of fourteen. It eliminated cervical cancer oh in that population. Goodness. Eliminated it. None. Not zero. Not one case of oh cervical my. cancer in that population. Because That's you said it's easily detected but hard to treat. Oh, so hard to treat. Oh, so Dr. hard to treat. Wendy. Prevention. 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 And be your own advocate. Thank you so much for coming in. It's a great discussion. Make sure you follow her on social media, Doctor. Every Woman and loopobgyn.com is where you can find out more information about Dr. Wendy.